Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson, and in this video we're going to talk about column space and null space. Specifically in this video, we're going to define what the null space and the column space are. After that, we're going to relate these spaces to previously learned concepts, and then lastly we'll look at an example problem to reinforce these ideas. Let's start off with the definition of the column space. The column space of a matrix A is a set of all linear combinations of the columns of A, and we will denote it as col A. So what exactly does this look like? Well, let's take an example. Let's look at the matrix 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, 1. Then the column space of this matrix, the column space of A, is a set of all linear combination of the columns of A. Well, what do linear combinations look like? They look like some number times the first column plus some number times the second column. And so this sum for any value of x1 and x2 would be a linear combination. So a set of all these possible values would be the column space. But if we look at this equation, this looks just like a vector equation, which we can also represent using the matrix equation like this. And so if this is a and this is x, then the output, the product of these two things, would be some b value and so another way we can think of the column space is a set of all b's. It's all the possible b's in my matrix equation. ax equals b. So it's all the outputs of this matrix multiplication. Now we've heard of that before. All of the possible outputs is another way for the range of the transformation. So we can also think of this as the range of the transformation that models the matrix multiplication. So we can also think of it as the range of this transformation. So now we've seen what the column space looks like, but the other question should be, is this really a subspace? And if it is a subspace, a subspace of what possibly larger a vector space? So when we look at this case, we can see that in our specific example, the column space of A was a subset of R3, because we can see all our outputs are three-dimensional vectors. In general, if I have an M by N matrix, once again, our specific example, we looked at an A three by two matrix. So here I'm looking at the number of rows being the dimension of my output. And so in our case, for any M by N matrix, the column space of our matrix would be a subset of RM. So that's the first thing we can see here. So the RM would be the larger vector space that the column space is a subset of. But now is it actually a subspace? Well, to show that it's subspace, we have to do three things. First, we have to show that it contains the zero vector. So our first question would be, is the zero vector in the column space of A? And sure it is, because we're looking at all the possible linear combinations of these two columns. And so one linear combination would be if I looked at x1 equals 0 and x2 equals 0. And if I did that, I would certainly get the vector 0, 0, 0. Thus, 0, 0, 0 is in the column space of A. Now, the next thing I have to look at is, is this subspace closed under vector addition and closed under scalar multiplication. So let's let u and v be two vectors that are in the column space of A. That's what we're going to start with. Now, if these vectors are in the column space, I should be able to represent them as linear combinations of the columns. So for instance, u, should, I should be able to rewrite as x1 times the first column of A plus x2 times the second column of A. And I should be able to do the same thing with v. I should be able to write them as a linear combination, except different x values here, maybe 3 and four, but both as linear combinations of the column of A. And so now if I looked at the vector u plus v, well, if I added these two pieces together, I would be adding all four of these vectors, but they both contain a multiple of A1. And so I could factor out the vector A1, and we write this as x1 plus x3 times that vector A1. I could do the same thing with the other vectors, to be right, it is x2 plus x4 times that vector a2. Oops, 
this should be an a2 up here. And so we, since x1 and x3, since the sum is just some real number, and the sum of x2 and x4 is just some real number, then u plus v can be written as a linear combination of the columns of a. And thus u plus v is in the column space of a. So I've shown that the sum of any two vectors of the column space is also in the column space. Thus it's closed under vector addition. I can do the same thing to see if it's closed under scalar multiplication. So if I look at any constant times u, well, that would just be c times x1, a1, plus c times x2, a2. Once again, these are just real numbers. And so this is really just a linear, a different linear combination of a1 and a2. Thus, this is also in the column space of a. So we've shown that the 0 is in the column space, and it's also closed under addition and scalar multiplication. Therefore, it really is a subspace. Now let's look at another subspace. The null space. The null space of A is a set of all solutions of the homogeneous equation AX equals 0. And we write it as the, the null of A. It's the null space. And so this definition is a little more straightforward. It's just the solutions to this equation. So if I have some matrix A that looks like 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. This is my matrix A. Then any X vector that makes this thing true, any of these inputs would be a member of the null space of A. So here, if we think of you know one possible input, it would have to be two-dimensional. It would have to have an x1 component, an x2 component. So in this way, we can see that the null space of A is really a subset of R2. And in general, if I looked at an M by N matrix, once again, up here, we had a 3 by 2 matrix, and therefore the vector we were multiplying by had to be 2 by 1, just so these inside values could match. So in general, if I have A as an M by N, then this X vector that I'd be multiplying would have to be an N by 1. And it's a subset of all these possible inputs that's really in the null space, just the ones that map to 0. So in this case, the null space would in general be a subset of R N. So that's kind of where our null space lives as a subset of Rn. And once again, we could go through the previous steps to show that this really is a subspace. Now to better understand the null space and the column space, we will look at some, some example problems of questions we might have to answer about that. So now let's look at a specific example to help us better understand the null space and column space. We're given a specific matrix A, here's A, and we start off by saying that the null space of A and the column space of A are subsets of what vector space? So this A looks like it's a 3 by 2 matrix. So in general, we could say that if it's a 3 by 2, then the null space should be a, a subset of Rn, or in this case, 2. And the column space should be a subset of Rm, or R3 in this case. Another way to reinforce this would be to say that the null space of A is the set of all inputs that map to 0. But just to do this multiplication, this x vector would have to have two components only. It'd have to be a 2 by 1 just to do the multiplication. So here I can see that the null space, which is just these values that map to 0, must be a subset of R2. Similarly, if I did that multiplication for any x1 and x2, the resulting vector would have three components. We can just see that by how matrix multiplication is done. So this would have to be a 3 by 1. So once again, it's just reinforced the fact that the column space of A is really just a subset of R3. Now, if we look on the next question, it says, is 1, 2, 3 in the column space of A? So they're really just asking, is there some x1 such that x1 times the first column plus some other number x2 times the second column, some linear combination that gets me to 1, 2, 3? But once again, this is just a vector equation, which is the same thing as a matrix equation. And all these things can be solved with row reduction. So to find out, I would just try to find the specific x1 and x2. I would try to solve this equation. To do so, I would create the augmented matrix that looks like this and do the row reduction. My first step would to take r3 minus 2 times r1. My first two rows would stay the same. And my third row would become 0 minus 2 and 1. My next step would be to take r3 plus 2r2, 
In this case, once again, my first two rows would stay the same, and my third row would become 0, 0, 3. And at this point, I am in REF, and I can identify my pivot positions. Now I have a pivot position in the far right-hand column of this augmented matrix, and that tells me there's no solution to this equation. Thus, there is no x1 and x2, where I could take those and find that linear combination that gets me to the vector 1, 2, 3. So the result is that no, 1, 2, 3 does not belong to the column space of A. Well, the next question says, is 1, 2 in the null space of A? Well, if, if it's in the null space of A, then the product A times this vector, 1, 2, should get me to the 0 vector. So to test if a specific vector is in the null space of A, I could just do the multiplication. In this case, if I did that multiplication, it looks like I get the values 3, 2, and 2, not 0, 0, 0. So no, this one is not in the null space of A. The harder question would be the next one. Describe the entire null space of A. They're not asking me to test one single vector, but rather to describe the whole space to look for all the solutions to the homogeneous equation. So all I would have to do is solve that equation. But to solve that equation just means to take that matrix and row reduce it. So I could just take my matrix, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2, 0. And if I wanted, I could augment that with 0, 0, 0. But because I know that the row reduction will not affect that last column, I can really just row reduce the matrix. And since I've already done the majority of that work in the previous problem, I know that this row reduces down to this to get REF. And if I took one more row operation to take R1 minus R2, I could put in REF, and it would look like this. And so here I can see that my solutions are just x1 equals 0 and x2 equals 0. So the only solution to the homogeneous equation in this case is the trivial solution. So if I were to describe fully the null space of A, I could actually, in this case, write out all the vectors that are in the subspace. In this case, it is just the zero vector. So this would be a full description of the null space. So in this video, we have defined null space, defined column space. We've done some examples to support their understanding. And that concludes this video. Thank you.